time. Hi. Hi, this is Carol of SDMetal.com. We are here at the House of Blues in San Diego for a highly anticipated tour. We've got, look at them, no introduction needed. We've got Yuka and Kai here from Winter Sun on their headlining tour of North America. How are you two gentlemen doing? What kind of coping mechanisms did you guys use when you were just frustrated and like this album isn't done? How do you keep yourself calm? What kind of things do you do to make yourself sort of relax in this situation? You smoke a lot of crack. <laughs> No, Mental. no, 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 we don't. no, we don't. I was no, we don't. more along no, this stuff, walk in nature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had other things, other bands, and uh, still like, when Yari was working on the album, I kept myself busy with Swallow the Sun. Oh, yeah, with a bunch of other, other projects I have, and you, of course, was doing some other, other stuff with other bands. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Emerald Forest, that's, a, that's always a good way to calm down. It's really, really calm, drawn. Uh, it's, Sort of. It's calm in the studio, not in the tour bus. I can't imagine. So, what kind of things, because you guys have a lot of trial and error from time one, what kind of things are you guys like, okay, I learned from this mistake and it's not going to happen when we record time two? Well, I don't know we, are, we, are, we are stupid, like... we just learn from these mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just, we, we just make new ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your favorite mistake to make then? <laughs> You're just like, oh, I did it again. Oh, the like silly uh, guy. <laughs> yeah, well, live stuff, yeah, but studio stuff. I don't think there's any mistakes in the album, though. No. Of course, things go on, and you. Uh... Because he already did it, let us do any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He fixed all our mistakes. I was gonna say it's what we got you for, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the spank master in the studio. <laughs> so. With this album, like you guys have pretty much hello. <laughs> you guys have pretty Damn. much all. <laughs> this is the so, uh, you want to join? What's up? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Hop in. Uh, Come on. Hop in. You're, you're making me hot in your black hoodie, by the way. So <laughs> it's supposed to feel like a sauna Sorry, here already. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> no, no, look up, really. <laughs> Yeah, he, Darn it! He's to smoke crack. Is he? Yeah. Uh, there you go. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Kai is right every time. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know what she's doing. So, a lot of you guys really, like, the whole band winners that you guys have really all culminated from, like, a lot of side projects. So is that something you, you really wanted to... Was, was Winter Sun kind of the culmination of everything you've taken and learned from other bands that you've been in? Of course it did, at least in some ways. Because you learn all kinds of things from other bands. Of course. Yeah. You keep you bring your expertise with you. Yeah, absolutely. Like I had a hard hard time with the first album when we did it together with Yari. Mm -hmm. Because I played in Water Sun for twelve years and mostly like it's like a certain style of music that's fast and has like also maybe some limitations that uh, in Winter Sun's music I, I was like uh, struggling a bit in the in the beginning to be able to pull it off because it's a lot of times in nature you have to play with the click and everything so it's very right, and it you're, you're used to kind of the muddy sort of stuff right like it's just like a good learning experience you know right. because that's why i always try to behave that you should keep your mind open and you know open yourself to new challenges yes otherwise you can't grow as a musician if you just kind of stay stay in the same place and don't go forward right you have to listen to your heart kind of to be able to stay true and you know, uh, you know, also you can understand that what your weaknesses are you know, as a player and as a musician. Yeah. And two, you guys really came from all, all the bands that you came from before Winter Sun were all pretty different. Some were industrial, some were like symphonic black, and then some were grindcore. So it's really awesome that you guys have all, I mean, Tom was a really cohesive piece, and it's really amazing. So it's so cool to see you guys coming from. Basically, four corners of metal and then join together to make this. I think it is a very huge project of teamwork that you guys really pull off. Yeah, That's of else. course, at least when it comes to um, time on, I'm thinking about the first album, there's quite a lot of step, step forward, for sure, yeah. a big one. And of course, now now there's more of the um, classic record. Well, the orchestrations are more in front than on the first album. Yeah. Absolutely. And now, actually, uh, we just don't sound like it. Should have sound over in the first album. Absolutely. I do think the first album definitely sounded more and Sephirum like than this one. This one just holds its own and it's really cool to see this a side project turn into 
it's such a well-known band now. I mean, you guys have gone from cold falling and just shot up this time, and it's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It's really impressive for this to go from a side project to something main, something that's going to be big yeah. in the metal world. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Now, on the first album, and Yari especially has this big Logan has this big black metal voice, and something I've always thought is that for a while, like Winter Sun, especially the first album, wrote on this edge of you can go black metal route or you can go the more like powery epic route, which you guys decided to go on. Why do you think you guys didn't choose that sort of darker, lo-fi black metal? Because it's so much better to have more variety in music, and and rather just make something monotonic and. Uh, actually, I have to say that uh, on time two, there's actually more of that, that darker vibe as well. So mm -hmm. there's faster songs, a couple of faster songs. And it's like, so time time one was more like like spreading to different directions, but time mm -hmm. two is also like a little bit different. So still, still have that darker feeling. Okay. And what did you guys decide to make this time one and time two as opposed to just like time and then something else? Is, is Was it like a concept album that was just too big to handle all at once? And what did you guys decide Basically, yeah, to? it was uh, our regular label's idea at first to split the whole time concept in two parts. And that's what we decided to do at some point. Because I think, yeah. To get the band on the road and you know, play yeah. new, new stuff for the people because we were so sick of just playing that first album material and we already wanted to go forward. We didn't go do any shows until time time one was ready, so I understand that because he was so like frustrated just doing the old stuff. Right, exactly. But the thing is like you guys got so worn out in the writing and making of time one, it would almost seem frustrating to do it time two because with that it's like, oh, we've got to do this whole process all over again. No, it's, no, it's, it's already done. Yeah. Oh, time good. Two, we we did both albums at the same time. We recorded everything, time one and yeah. time two. Good. In, in when, when we did the first at first, time one recordings with the drums and everything. We did the both, both albums too because it was supposed to be just one album, one like 85, right. 85 minutes gigantic piece of music and are you is it more and, and did you guys you guys split it up for the anticipation factor or for the like you know what you've got to savor this part first and then this part no, no, there's kind of both but in the end it actually was a good thing to do so because now that individual songs get more attention more mm -hmm. into spotlight more or less because otherwise it would have been more than 90 minutes but 90 minutes package so it would be quite like a heavy right a heavy I, 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 I think that the, if, if people after the album, when they listen to it through, they want to hear it again, or they want some, want some more. So that's kind of better than instead of, like you listen to some albums that have you know, like 80 minutes of music. No matter how good it is, it still like gets a little bit. You get you get tired of it at, at some point. Even the songs are really different from time one and time two. There's a lot of different different uh, moods and things. So it's still better to have after the album the feel that. People want to hear, hear more. Yeah. yeah. Instead of you can't even listen to the album through because it's so exhausting. Because that actually is time right. one and time two. If you listen to it as a, as a whole, it's, a, <laughs> it's just like it's, it's, it's so big pile of <laughs> crap you have to sink into your <laughs> mouth. It's like just too much. Yeah. Too much information. Like, like breaking the dam. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can just actually, like you said, the, the songs get more attention now because there's only like three main songs and two intro. Uh -huh. And when are you guys releasing, plan on releasing time two? You're going to obviously let like, time one so far. Hopefully oh, next year. Next year. And it's just sitting and waiting for... Oh, it's just like mixing it it's still, it's still Good. in the worst. Now, what is... But the, the thing is that I want to say that when it comes to time two, is actually just the missing half of the whole time album comes okay. So it's definitely not going to be something that we're just releasing some not that good songs. Right. It's, it's, it's like every, every detail is like a, like a time one, it's still like perfection and, and every every note is like... Which is cool because that's something only you guys know. For everyone else who's been waiting for this album for years, it feels like a completion. It feels like, oh my god, like winter comes back and they've got this cool stuff. And I'm sure when time two comes out, they're just going to be more my book. Like you guys can see the whole right now, but only oh, everyone else can only see the half. You know? yeah. So that's going to be spectacular. I think time two is just going to 
take you guys to a whole other level too. It's gonna be yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think there's also be a couple of surprises. So oh. so why so people will be hopefully really excited. Absolutely. There's a couple of songs that it's fucking hard to do more. Talking Storm, about the Storm. hip hop track trash. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. They're, 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 Speaking of hip hop tracks, I'm surprised you guys haven't tried one of those out based on all the covers I've heard you guys are starting to do in your. That's true. <laughs> yeah, really, at least we could have the clock in the, in the cover if we have time, so it yeah. that's pretty close to hip hop, though. Yeah. We're gonna get flavor, flavor to say the yeah. <laughs> Something stupid. Yeah. But I mean, you guys have done a variety of covers. My, my friend in San Francisco was just blown away when you guys even tried to do your Metallica cover and you guys mentioned before the interview that you guys tried to like do a cover and you're kind of spontaneous about it. So where did this where did this come from? I mean you guys did Smashing Pumpkins, after you did Nirvana, you did Aerosmith. Where does that but you always say, oh we don't do it so well. Where does that kind of spontaneity come from? Why'd you guys well, decide to do this? That it would be something fun to do actually to um, play some local music while we're playing. And like give a nice respect for the band stuff. That we listen to and play that stuff live as well. Or if it's just like a funny clip to just have fun. And also to make the make make the fans kind of on a, on a good mood. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you play like Frank Sinatra's New York, New York, people will get fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, awesome. because we, it, was, it was like Jesus Christ, we could never expect the metal band to play play Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. I would, I would need to see a video of uh, that. Yeah, there's that's video. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's a oh, YouTube, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I should say you guys pull off that little cabaret part. That's <laughs> amazing. But uh, how much of a song, if it's a cover, I mean, how much of it do you guys practice? Do you just say, hey, just the, uh, let, let's do this song just over here? Does everybody before, know it? Before the show, like the backstage. Yeah. Just. So you'll just end up doing like a verse or something like that? Yeah, yeah. like a one minute. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. And that adds another, that's just, a level of spontaneity and fun that mm -hmm. not a lot of bands do. Yeah. There's no room for covers on time one and time two. There's just not no, there's just no room. <laughs> <laughs> At least right now. Yeah, you know, you, covers are you know, boring usually on, on the album anyway. Once you make a cover with the with the song that already existed, you can't really make it better. If you make it really different, then it's a different name. Yeah. But you know still it's like I think there's why bother to make a cover. <laughs> yeah. I, like, of course you can do like it's sometimes fun, like Bodo has done like a lot of cool covers from, yeah. from different pop songs or whatever. That's it's the a, only metal band I've ever wanted to try singing Jesse's Girl, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but for you guys, uh, I mean, especially since this is a really lengthy concept album, I asked the same thing to Flesh Con Apocalypse just because that was their first concept album as well. But what for you guys is the hardest part about creating a concept album? You know, of course, it, it came from the art, he wanted yeah. to have a certain concept for this entire like, subject around it. But I, I don't know, it's like, I'm just thinking about because he used to compose for other bands in the past and I don't see that there would be any problem whether it's a concept album or not. You just have a vision and you start working on that. Because That's you've got like thing. a story on the brain and it's like, well the story has to kind of, like the music has to like, if you're going to take on a concept album, you're not just taking on music, you're taking on a, a, a story. You, you have yeah. another dimension to it. You know? Yeah, well, times, the story is kind of like another dimension in a way, so universal thing that actually it's acting as everything into the concept kind of. Everybody's touched by the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all have some time in, in, the, in here, and some of us has, has it more, some of us has it less, I don't know. What do we experience during that time of our, you know, our time in, in this planet? Right. So yeah. It's like really actually huge subject. Subject to this actually think about it like that. Right? Yeah. No, it's it's, so, it's big. It's an abstract concept too. It's not even like kind of kind of like you said. It's it's not about a monster. It's not about it's not about a historical event. Something that like has a beginning and an end. You're right. It's about time and it's so abstract. Mm. Like how do you put like, that? Into like the limits of limits of well, time, like, like a minute like in, and a second. Yeah, like kind in, of in the song time, we we sing that time waits for no one, and that's true. Right. Time goes on without us, you know. It still continues even if we don't exist anymore. So it just like moves forward. Things change. That's a good concept to go into with your music. I think so, it's just amazing. Yeah. So, so tell me, um, my last question for you guys is: What is 
what's going on after the North American? Are well, you guys taking a break, or you guys got some European stuff going on? Are you going to go back live to the festival? Yep. Or was Fine, why is it time to? Still yeah. mixing and mastering to be done yeah, and so we'll take focusing on that. And, I, and when it's when we're, it's the time. It's time to release time too. <laughs> then, so much time. then it's time for more touring. <laughs> time. Time. <laughs> well, I am glad you guys took the time uh, for this interview. I'm never going to hear the word time the same way again after this. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but thank you so much, Yuka. Thank you. And thank you, Kai. Thank you for thank joining you us on SDMetal.com. We'll save the show.